Hey everybody, welcome to, I don't know what to call this, what do you call it, a prediction, right? Yeah, well, predictions. Yeah. It's predictions. Yeah. For everyone we get wrong, we're going to donate a thousand dollars. Let me not say that. That's no. actually a horrible idea because then we sound really bad. No, it's wrong. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never put money on this stuff. <laughs> Who knows the, mo- the inner minds of Nintendo and Sakurai? So basically, Nintendo yeah, Nintendo. But yeah. so we're basically going to try to theorize and and guess the next four, not five, but four DLC characters coming into Super Smash Brothers Ultimate because we know who the first one is, and you're a big fan of that one. Yes, absolutely. You actually played the game. I didn't. I did. No, you did. You well, just I did. did. You didn't care for it. Yeah, I didn't like it as much. And I kind of want to give it a second chance because. Uh, I did some research and I found my bae, Anne. Oh, on yeah. Yeah, I, I fell in love. I saw her art and I was like, oh shit, where's this from? And then I clicked on it and I said Persona 5 and I was like, fuck! <laughs> now I have to play the game. So there's that, but if I'm you... excited. Now that I know the characters in Smash though, I have more drive to give it a better chance. Well, I think that kind of just is the Smash effect, you know? Yeah, you, no, You play that's... a lot more games uh, that are in Smash just to kind of figure out what that's about i think that's actually kind of cool because i've been telling you and kanai how much i didn't like the game and the game was boring but because the character was announced now i'm like you know what let me give this another chance so now it's kind of like marketing works for smash anybody who says (laughs) marketing doesn't work it works no it definitely does uh and i say yeah go ahead and give it a second chance because um I, I think jo- Joker is going to be a phenomenal character. I was absolutely hyped when the character was announced. Um, the game for Persona Five does have an incredibly slow start, yeah. but uh, once you get into once you get into it, I, I think the story is actually really really phenomenal. It's 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 up there in terms of one of my favorite games. Before so. I we jump in, I do want to say that Joker does have the best announcement trailer in Smash history for me. I think that uh, me watching it, I have no idea who he was at all until specifically they name dropped him. And then like, no, that's not true. I didn't know he was who he was until he uh, he did a certain move that I remember from the game. And I was like, oh, shit, that, that might be Persona 5. And then like at this point, obviously, like at the end of the trailer, they tell you. And it was one of those things where I was like, OK, this is cool. This will be a lot more cool cooler if i play the game so now i have to play the game oh yeah i bet it was a uh, kind of confusing at that point because you were just like yeah but like that got me really good because it was kind of like a who is this so like you know like when now with the internet we know everything as is happening mm-hmm. but now it's like what what's what's going on <laughs> so before we jump in i do want to say that uh any dlc character that is not from the series that already has a character in the roster will be will be from a series with zero representation from Smash, which Joker was one of those. Mm-hmm. Evidence for that is Persona has no representation in Smash. Reggie stated that DLC characters may be characters that aren't typically associated with Nintendo. That's paraphrasing, of course, because uh, mm-hmm. I didn't want to copy like the whole thing. Right. But uh, to me, that took a big influence on my choices because my choices are like, they were out there and like they change a lot. Right. So my choices change a lot. Yeah, I like before Joker was announced, I had kind of some predictions of what I thought like DLC would did be. Did you have a lot of Nintendo characters? Because I did. It was. I, I still think that st- I still thought that there would be third party characters, yeah. but I thought it would be roughly like two out of the five would be third party. Yeah. Um, but like with the announcement of Joker and just kind of some of the stuff that Reggie said. Now, now. Here's the thing, like Reggie is just doing PR talk. Yeah, so, I mean, he could be overhyping too. Yeah, he could be overhyping it, and he some of his stuff could also just be be like stuff taken out of context, and yeah. that's not what he really means to say. But because of how he has to word things, that's how it has to happen. But um, I still think, based off of if what he's saying is legit, then we could possibly see all of the DLC being third party characters. And I didn't originally think that was the case. I agree with you. So. I agree. Though, actually, no, I disagree with you. My list is going to disagree with you. Yeah. Well, my safe list, list is definitely going to disagree with what I said. But but I do agree that I think that there's a lot of potential for third party. And um, with the recent addition of certain characters like Snake, um, Snake helps some of my characters and Toon mm-hmm. Link helps some of my characters. And I'll explain why. Uh, do you want to go first and we take 
What's your fourth pick? Uh, my fourth pick is, and I think we both have this, so I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Um, my fourth pick is a new Pokemon character. Okay. So I have to ask my second pick, but mm-hmm. I'll swap it right now. Yeah. Uh, so I we talked about this yesterday. Uh, yesterday, me and Dante went out to eat, and we talked about this. And I think we're both very positive we're going to get Gen 8 Pokemon. And yes. I think it's going to be the Lucario, uh, Soark, you know. I don't think it'll be a starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't care what it is as long as it looks cool. But I think it'll be kind of like, you know how in every region we get that special Pokemon that's not a legendary? Um, it's like you have Lucario, Soark. Yeah. Um, those kind of po- I think it'll be one of those because typically in the anime, we always get that character and during the last arc of like whatever gen. So right now we're in Gen 7. So that Pokemon should be making an appearance in the Pokemon League or in the story. In yeah, usually those Pokemon are usually like one of the first ones revealed when it comes to yeah. uh, the new generation. Yeah. So like I remember, I think it was back in high school, like uh, Zorua uh, was one of the very first Pokemon announced for Gen 5. Yeah. Like way before they even like said, I, I think it could have even happened before, like when they made the announcement for Gen 5, they were like, oh, here's a new Pokemon. No, I remember. And it was Zorua. Yeah. And then I think... There's a lot of good promotion for that uh, Pokemon. Did that Pokemon end up getting a movie? Yes. Z- Zorark? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and same he thing ended up getting Mario. a movie. He had a movie, and then the little one, the pre ball form, mm-hmm. was a big part of the anime for the longest time. See, uh, when it comes to Pokemon, I'm excited. Uh, we made the joke yesterday that they should just make a Pokemon Smash at this point, <laughs> because there's a lot of Pokemons we like. But mm-hmm. if we get a Pokemon, I will love a... Uh, type that we don't have in the game because we have Greninja which is water we have Jigglypuff which is fairy uh, Pikachu and Pichu which are electric and then we have Cinnamon which is fire and dark I will love some I will actually love a fighting type <laughs> mm-hmm. so if uh, if we can get a fighting type other than Lucario no because we have Lucario which yeah, yeah never yeah. mind I it would be nice if we could have a Pokemon that wasn't represented but at this point we are starting to get see like double representation yeah. Like Squirtle now coming back. We have two water yeah. uh, and two water starters. Two water as starters. Well as, uh, with Charizard and Incineroar, there's two fire starters. And then we have a uh, lot of starters too. Yeah, we have, have a lot of starters. Yeah. So starters are easier to get into Pokemon because usually starters I feel are created to be better in terms of promotion. Do you feel that if they don't do a Gen 8 Pokemon, which Pokemon would you love to see in Smash? Because I have, uh, for me, it's Beware. Mm-hmm. I think that Beware's lore and his ability plays perfect mm-hmm. because I think that he could be heavy, like Bowser heavy, uh, but all melee. Like, there's no range attacks for him. Um, make him heavy, hard to throw off the stage. Slow, Make him slow, though, because, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's Beware, and this one, like, a lot of people disagree with because of the Pokemon XL. Because we already have a fire, but I think Infernape will kill it in Smash because his move set is there, and I we need more monkeys and uh, we have two apes. And I feel like that's not enough. Well, yeah, I mean we have, but to be fair, like we are still missing the third member of the Donkey Kong Country crew. Yeah. The 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 the, the more more prominent member uh, being yeah. Funky Kong. No, Funky. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the one we all want, the real character we all want. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Dixie's missing, uh, and so we have Donkey Kong and Diddy. Um, so if we got another ape or monkey in that wasn't Dixie Kong, I'm not sure how the Smash community would feel about that. So for the longest <laughs> time, I thought we were gonna get. Uh, I really thought we were gonna get uh, Funky Kong, mm-hmm. or is it Funky or Chunky? Funky's the Fun- big, the big one. No, uh, uh, that has like Lanky, a, Lanky, Lanky Kong. Lanky's so the long, that's arc. the one out. For the longest time, I was very dead set, and during development for Smash. Bra introduced Diddy Kong, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, so during 4. Okay, so during 4, the developers were watching a lot of One Piece. Mm-hmm. And if you if you go back to Smash uh, 4 and you watch Diddy Kong's moveset, he has a lot of Luffy's moveset and he stretches, which is something that he doesn't naturally do in the actual games. Mm-hmm. The developers were inspired by Luffy as a character and they gave him a moveset that doesn't copy Luffy, but it was kind of like an homage, which I thought was kind of cool. And I was like, okay, dumbasses, why not add Lanky Kong, who can actually stretch, and he has two moves that the actual character does. So I thought that was kind of weird, but... It's, it's all right. You have Lanky Kong as a spirit. Yeah. So it's okay. 
That makes me sad. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but yeah, what Pokemon would you choose if you had to? Um, if I had a choice, uh, I'm still, I'm still set on. I I want Decidueye in okay. in Pokemon. Uh, and this was like way back when we first talked about uh, yeah. predictions. Yeah. Uh, like almost. This would have been roughly around four years ago, I think. Yeah. R- more or less three three years, but either way, like I'm still. It was two weeks before, uh, Sun and Moon came out. Mm-hmm. Because I remember that we had to talk about this, and we're like, oh, it was actually not a Smash talk. It was a Pokemon talk, mm-hmm. and we said when t- we de- we made a video about when they finally showed the evolved forms, mm-hmm. and I remember saying like, the Sedui and Sinor have to make it to Smash because the third one's like trash for Smash mm-hmm. for like. For it's Smash. Not, yeah, for Smash is trash. And I was like, if either or of these characters make it, I will be happy. Mm-hmm. Which one did. Yeah, I was, and that was back in the day when we didn't think Pokemon Trainer was coming back. So I thought Incineroar yeah. was off the table. I'm actually glad that Incineroar is back now. He's actually a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Um, I, I originally didn't think he would be. But uh, I would think Decidueye would have to be my choice. But at this point... I don't know how likely that is, and we already got him in Pokin, so I feel like that's kind of that's why I don't think that's we're kind of get a him. killer for him. Um, and then, other than that, it's it's a really tough call because then you have to pick a uh, a Pokemon that's kind of iconic ish and, and brings something new to the table if they're not like already a new Pokemon. Yeah. Um, I know some... a lot of people still want Blaziken. Which yeah. I know we talked that about that yesterday. Infernape yeah. has Blaziken has the fir- the same problem that uh. Infernape has in terms of like a fire starter. Fire. Um, but a lot of fire starters tend to lend themselves well to the Smash formula. Uh, other than that, Zoroark would be neat to kind of pull out of a Pokemon, Pokemon Pokeball Pokemon, um, or even the new uh, the new Electric Cat. Yeah. Uh, Zerua. So ha- Soroa. I, I can't pronounce it. I yeah. know who you're talking. It's the one in the movie. Yeah. I actually thought he was going to be a character. Um, I did a video with somebody else, and it's on their channel. If I if I can remember the name of their channel, there's like a bunch of numbers. Mm-hmm. If I can remember the name of their channel, I'll put it in here. But I actually made the theory that that Pokemon is gonna make it. Cause I was like, oh yeah, he's gonna be a Gen Eight Pokemon. And I was super wrong. But uh, I was very dead said that he was gonna be like a Gen Eight Pokemon. All right. So, so now that I got three. a uh, yeah, now I got one off of yours and our both of our lists. Go ahead and do your third. So my number three is. A Capcom character, uh, and I put. I know it's supposed to be four choices, but I put two for Dela for Dela for going mm-hmm. forward. Uh, I'm not saying both will make. I think one of these. Uh, I'm very very positive. I actually, if out of all my list, this one ideally should be number one. But it's Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil. Or Beautiful Joe, uh, Beautiful Joe. Um, the reason I feel. I feel that beautiful Joe could get it. It's because Hideki uh, Kayima uh, actually stated that he would love to make a remake for beautiful Joe. And then uh, right when he stated that, um, he ended up getting a follow from uh, Nintendo America, which was uh, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, I like to look into these things, and I was mm-hmm. like, holy shit, that's kind of cool. So uh, the reason I picked Resident Evil 2 is because Resident Evil 2 killed it on the Nintendo and then you had Resident Evil 4 which popularized and I hate this part but they made Leon the main character of Resident Evil not Chris Mm -hmm. or any of the other characters so Resident Evil 4 sold so good on the GameCube and a lot of people's first Resident Evil game was that one and I feel like Leon is not a bad character we already have Snake which has similar like very humanoid like, mm-hmm. Cyrus Su Samus is still, like, cartoony looking, and Snake is, like, very realistic. You know what I mean? So it yeah. does... I feel that Leon can fit that right there. Um, he's very anime looking, though. So we have Fire Emblem characters that are a little bit cartoony compared to uh, Snake. Mm-hmm. But Snake looks more realistic than what Leon would normally look like. Yeah, so, and they, they usually try to balance it out. Um, they say that it's tough, but when it comes to characters that are a little bit more realistic, like if you take a look at the new Smash game, like a lot of Snake's explosions are actually a little bit more yeah. like cel-shaded and cartoony, and yep. that's how they kind of tie everything together. And I like that because uh, for Leon Smooch said they can do something like a shotgun, which we don't have any characters, or not a shotgun, but something like close-range 
big burst attack like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the guns in the games are just like quick shots or charge. Yeah, you know? and you can give him knife slashes and stuff too. Yeah, he has. Uh, you can give him his roundhouse kick. His, yeah, his, I was his grab could be a suplex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of Leon. If you play Resident Evil Six, which was a flop, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Leon actually has a lot of grab moves in there, mm -hmm. where he does like a Superman punch. He does suplex. He does a uh, vertebrae. So he does like a lot of grab moves that can over, that Snake kind of does already. But Leon can put a spin on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Leon also has flash grenades, stun grenades, and uh, nitrogen grenades. I don't think they'll give him all three, of course. Stun but grenades would be interesting. I'm yeah. surprised no character has that. In yeah, that's why I was like, like the more I think about Leon, and the more I talk with people, anybody who agrees with me with Leon, and then they'll bring something in, I'm like, okay, I'm going to steal that and say it for my explanation <laughs> now. Because the grenade thing was not my idea. That was somebody mm -hmm. else's. But uh, Leon has a big chance of making it, mainly because we're getting the Resident Evil 2 remake. And uh, Resident Evil 4, of course, outsold, or not outsold, it's sold amazing on the GameCube. And then Beautiful Joe, because one, the art style will be amazing for Smash. Two, I love Beautiful Joe. I love the games. Uh, it actually sold very well on the GameCube, and when they ported it to the PS2, it also it actually outsold the GameCube version. So I think Beautiful Joe is a gr I was going to say a beautiful choice. Beautiful Joe is a great choice for Smash. The only problem is I don't know where his popularity stands mm -hmm. in 2019. Yeah. He's a, he's a little bit of a tough call, yeah. really, because he doesn't have a relevant game. And he was actually uh, cut from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Yep. So, like, his character is a little questionable. Yeah. Um, Leon, I actually think, is uh, pretty doable. And also bringing into fact uh, the idea of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, he was not brought into that game. Chris is still, Chris in, that, was. Chris is still in that game. And Chris, a lot of, Wesker, and Nemesis, yeah. yeah. And, um, Joe. They even got rid of they got rid of uh, Wesker and Jill from that oh, game too. Oh, did they? Um, Nemesis is still in the game, but uh, yeah. So I think because of that though, because uh, I think with with uh, shoot Infinite, uh, they wanted to bring a lot of like guests uh, or fan favorite characters, which is why they brought in Mega Man X. Yeah. Um, and Leon actually has been requested for that game for quite some time. Yeah. He still hasn't shown up for whatever reason. I remember and then there's a, one of the evos that uh, I was watching and they did a poll mm -hmm. of which character I love to see and like Leon had like a landslide victory yeah. of like I think Leon is uh, the, the, the reason maybe why Leon might be is they could have other plans for him yeah he he could lend himself to smash and he could actually take some of Jill's old mood set from Marvel's Capcom 2 and have him like throwing around zombies that would be pretty, pretty cool yeah pretty all right, so, so your third choice. My third choice is a character I don't know too much about, but it only makes a lot. It, it makes a ton of sense for me. Um, is Silux uh, from the Metroid Prime series? Okay. Uh, Silux is one of the other uh, hunters, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I have to uh, look it out because I actually don't know who that is. Yeah, uh, it's one of the other hunt hunters uh, from either Metroid Prime Hunters on the DS or something along those lines, and. They're shaping up that character to be uh, a main part of Metroid Prime 4. Because his ship appeared at the end of Metroid Prime 3. And with, uh, despite the fact that people didn't really like this game, uh, the Metroid uh, Federation Force yeah. uh, was a part of the Prime series. Okay. And he also made an appearance at the end of that game, too. So they're really sh shaping him up to be kind of like the big bad of the new game. Yeah. And I think it only makes sense because Metroid Prime 4 is coming out. Uh, and uh, Silux, I'm not sure if you've, you've looked into all the spirits that are in the game and then aren't that, that haven't I haven't appeared. looked into all of them, but I have seen quite a few. So there's over a thousand spirits in the game. I think there's a thousand two hundred to be a little bit more specific, but that's not the exact number. Silux doesn't actually appear as any of the Metroid spirits. Okay. And that seems weird to me, considering the fact that they uh, they have some of the like lesser known hunters yeah. that don't play as big of a story, uh, part of the story. But yet you have Silux who has appeared at the end of some of these games to kind of like spur him on to be a, a major part of the next story, the next entry point, which would be Metroid Prime 4, but yet he's nowhere to be found. So it's kind of like a build the audience up to get used to what he looks like, what he stands for, and yeah. boom, throw him in. So I think it's already been done before. Uh, we've seen char a character in the past, uh, Corrin from uh, Final, uh, Fire Emblem, 
make his way into Smash mostly because of marketing. Um, Especially before the game comes out. The game came out. Uh, because Corin came out before... Uh, the Corin, Cor- I'm very positive Corin came out Corin, before... Uh, Corin came out a little bit before Fire Emblem, I yeah. think, did. Uh, and, but that's only in America. Because okay. in, in Japan, it, yeah. uh, Corin was out, I think, six months beforehand. Okay. Um, but And Sakurai has gone, gone on record to state like he was a little worried about putting this character into the game because... He mainly thought it, it, it was like, don't we already have too many Fire Emblem characters? But Nintendo made a big enough push that he was like, all right, I'll do it. We do, though. Uh, and uh, I think it's, it's so it's been done before. Promotional work has been done before. And I think when they're looking to do these new characters for the Smash DLC, yeah, there is a strong possibility that they're going to be using some of this for marketing purposes, too. Okay. And I mean, we, we kind of... It's not that way with Joker in a sense because his game's already out, but we he his game's relatively popular enough and it could still reach people outside of that because it's Smash. I mean, how yeah. many people play Smash? I mean, you you even said you're more willing to try out the game. Yeah, because, I actually gonna go buy because the game he was soon. announced for Smash. Yeah, I'm probably so. gonna buy it either tomorrow or like next pay, mm-hmm. but I'm already decided like I have to play the game now because. I like knowing about the characters and, like, yeah. that kind of stuff. So I think Silux only makes sense because of that. Okay. It's a safe pick. But, once again, these are safe picks. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's our number three. Mm-hmm. Who went first for this one? I did, right? Uh, I did, but then I kind of tied both of our uh, – my fourth pick and your second pick together. Okay. So, Okay, so I, I mean, need to move my second – okay, I see. Okay. So uh, – my my uh my next pick is a little crazy. It's there. Um, These aren't our crazy picks yet. <laughs> he's crazy, but I'm dead set, and okay. it's Sora. And I know a lot of people. Right. So I whenever I bring Sora, uh, if you guys don't know Sora, it's from uh, I was gonna say Final Fantasy. Jeez, I was, uh, Kingdom kind of. Hearts. Yeah, kind, kind of. of. <laughs> uh, it's from Kingdom Hearts, the main character. When I bring Sora, usually a lot of my friends are split about it because they're like, he doesn't fit. He's a Disney property. He's not a Disney property. Mm-hmm. Uh, I looked it up. He's a Square property. Um, so, who are your friends? Because like, if they say he doesn't fit, like, no, what people what, are, well, no, what they're Kingdom not saying, Hearts is he play, or are they playing? The, what they're saying is that it doesn't fit Smash. They're saying that it won't happen. Oh, okay. That's what they're saying. So I okay. have friends like, uh, like I'm part of a Smash Hell shit posting group, mm-hmm. and. Um, I posted this exact list on um, there, and they ignore one through three, and then they came to the fourth person, which was Sora on my list, and they're like, no, you're stupid. And then they're <laughs> like, he'll never make it. But the thing is, we have Link, we have Cloud, we have Shulk now, which are like I don't consider to be part of the whole Sourceman thing, but mm-hmm. like after playing the first game, I'm like, oh, yeah. It'd be nice to have a protagonist that wasn't blonde from an RPG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a sword, like a sword wheeler. Yeah. I don't count the fire emblems. Uh, Sora <laughs> will be nice because he does use a key blade that's not really a blade. Mm-hmm. He uses it like a sword, but it also has other functions. Uh, it can shoot. It can absorb energy. Uh, he can use it as melee. Um, there is moves to be used there. Yeah, he's and, got so much going for him. Like, yeah. it, it would be super easy to make a, a yeah. Smash moveset for him. And I really feel that... So so before this, everybody's dream match was Link versus Cloud. Mm-hmm. And when I got Cloud, I remember I did nothing but Link versus Cloud nonstop. Like, uh, my wife's brother-in-law would come over and say, like, Are you still doing this match? Because it would just be those two going against each other. Because to me, that's like my wet dream. And now that I got out of my system, Sora's the new one. That I was like, Sora's needed in here now. Like, we need that young kid, swordsman, main character, bullshit moveset here. And I really feel that he's going to make it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly because of Reggie's comment. If I were to take Reggie's comment word for word, I, out of my list right now, like, Leon would make me happy. A Gen A Poke will make me happy. But Sora will be the biggest shocker. Because nobody will ever... I mean, people are still making the argument that he's a, a Disney property. Which he's not. He's not... Guys, he's not a Disney property. And... 
and correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't we getting a couple of Final Fantasy games on the Switch? Uh, yeah. Or we, a couple of remakes, right? Um, we're getting re-releases of, uh, they're not remakes, they're ports. Yeah. For uh, Final Fantasy 7, 9, 10, and 10 too. As well as 12. We're getting 12 as well. So, it already shows that Nintendo's working with Square. And mm -hmm. one of the things is that you need to build a relationship to be able to ask some. Like, you can't just walk up and, like, hey, Bedesta, can we have the Bolt Boy for Smash? Like, I feel like there has to be a relationship there. And I feel that because they have games on the Switch coming, that relationship already exists. Yeah, it's it's a tough call. Uh there's, I'm not sure if, how much of, like, the leak community you're following. So, by, yeah. by the way, th I'm, I'm going to speak about some leaks, so if you don't want to hear yeah, about I'll those. Yeah, I'll put it, what I'll do, guys, is I'll put a little warning on the video, and when you see the spoiler warning leave, then you can unmute the video. Go yeah, ahead. Go so ahead. I'm going to speak about some leaks uh, real quick. But um, there have been some leaks that are going around saying that there is, that Square is going to have another character in Smash as DLC. Okay. Uh, originally, it was thought about to be talked about in the base roster, but now it's switched over to um, the DLC list. And, of course, as with all leaks, you should take a grain of salt. But now this is, uh, this is expanded from a couple leakers. Just so you point. know, th this just supports my number one pick. Yeah. This is expanded from a couple leakers, uh, and now there's, like, talk of seven different characters. Okay. Uh, that Square is choosing from that apparently have been talked about, and some of these could just be code names, so they can try to sniff out who's leaking what. Yeah. Um. One of them is Sora. Um, okay. And I think with this much talk, uh, it's very highly likely that we could see a, another Square character. I it it does raise questions because Square is a tough third party to work with. It is. They <laughs> they're very tight with their pro with their uh with their property. Uh, so, even if, like, Disney, even if Sora was related with Disney uh, somehow, I don't think Disney would have a problem with their with their property being in Smash. Yeah. Because they, they see the money with it. Square is the weird one with it, because we only have two characters, uh, two songs from Final Fantasy VII in Smash. Cloud is still the only character voiced in Japanese because of how their contracts work with their English voice actors. Um... So yeah, Square Square can be stingy, but I can see if they're taking something from another property of Square's that they could be willing to push another character into. So I, I I'm so glad you Sora said that. Because when we get to number one, my number one choice that helps support my number one choice. Mm -hmm. My number one choice, I'm a little. So Leon, I'm a hundred percent sure it's gonna make it. My number one choice, I'm literally like. 80%. All right. Well... But, but what's your... Uh, are we done with... Uh, I don't with, think you said yours. I with, think I said mine. Yeah. You No, I'm not saying... Oh, okay. Are saying. we done with Sora? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So my uh, second choice is Rex and Pyra from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Okay. Now, this is a weird one because, once again, we already have representation of these characters in Smash. Uh, I have yet to actually double check this. I don't think Rex has a spirit. I could be wrong. I'm gonna double check that. So uh, I'm, I'll check that for you right now. Yeah. Because I could have sworn I saw Rex, but I might be wrong. I know Rex has the Me Fighter, um, the Me Fighter costume, and I know Pyra and Mithra are both spirits. But I'm not sure about Rex himself, which just seems like a, a little weird for him not to have one, because all the characters by doing their classic mode, and the uh, in the classic mode in games of more you get their main fighter spirit and that would seem to me that you can get their that spirit from there so uh rex was considered for the roster yeah but that's going to be added due to ultimate being too far into development and right. xenoblade chronicles 2 being announced after planning was finished right so anyways to continue on i think I think that we are going to see a break of trends, because there's a couple trends going on right now. Also, Rex is uh, a oh, spirit. Oh, he's a spirit? Yeah. Okay, well, sucks to that idea. But uh, <laughs> I think we're going to see a break of trends when it comes to uh, DLC. Yeah. There's going to be something that breaks a trend 
So whether that's an assist trophy becoming playable, a Pokemon Pokemon becoming playable, like those po- those anything that already has content in the game, and we've already been we've already talked about this before, but Reggie said that that's not going to happen. Yeah. But Sakurai has already gone on record to say that this character won't happen. This character won't happen. Uh, Ridley won't happen. Animal Crossing yeah. Villager won't happen because he can't create a move set for him because he's too peaceful. But we've already s- seen that stuff broken. Yeah. Uh, I think with DLC we can see something broken again. So I can consider assist trophies becoming playable. I think that can be something that'd be broken. Please um, give me my uh, <laughs> give me my skull kid. Um, I can consider uh, spirits or anything already represented in the game also being broken. Sakurai has also gone on record saying, like, we've already talked about Persona a little bit. Yeah. But he's played the game, and he's he's uh, he's marveled over the By myth. By the way, have you seen the promotional he did today yeah, with uh, Morgana? I did. I did, I did okay. watch it a little bit. Um, but he's he said that the menus in the game are phenomenal, and he's he was really impressed with the overall presentation of the game. So you know that he looks at some of this stuff. And yeah, no, he has to. Yeah. He also said the same thing for Xenoblade Chronicles too. He's praised the game, and he said, and he's already gone on record saying he admits that he would have liked to have put Rex in the game, but because of when it was announced, it was a little bit late. But I can still consider it with Nintendo. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two did really well. I know, and I, I know it's still kind of a, a niche uh, RPG, but so it sold really well on the I Switch. I played the first one, and yeah. at first I wasn't into it, and I forced myself to play it, and mm-hmm. I was like, this game's really lit. Um, it was definitely a game that it's not my niche, mm-hmm. but once I gave it a chance, like I did like it, and I'm still, I haven't played two. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple people praise it, so I kind of want to check it out. It's one of those things where like, because it's not my type of game, I haven't given it a chance, but mm-hmm. it's on my like to play list. I see it as um, it's kind of has some things that you can tie to uh, Persona in a way. It has a game. It's a game that starts off kind of slow, uh, and you really have to kind of like trudge through it. Unfortunately, uh, but once you get into it, the story really hooks you. Like the combat system starts to really flow and just makes you feel really, really powerful in the game when you do like certain like combos and connections. Yeah. And I don't know with the pra- with with the parallels that I'm seeing when it comes to Persona, which was already announced. Uh, as Joker being a character, and then when I look at Z- uh, Xenoblades, which has also received praise from Sakurai, yeah, um, I just I, I see it as a character that, and of course it would be another sword character, which everybody's kind of like, oh my <laughs> goodness, but Rex has a little more that uh, diverse diversifies him as a sword character. He'd have the connection with his blades, which would help to power him up in combat. His sword actually has a little bit of a longer, a much longer reach compared to most swords. Yeah. Um, even it could probably even rival a, uh, outrival Cloud's, uh, sword. Yeah. Um, so I can see him as a little bit of a slower swinger, but he covers a lot of range because of that. Okay. Um, and there's the there is the blade system in a in a theorized move set that I have with uh that, in the game uh, Xenoblade Chronicles when you want to do your really powerful attacks you pass your sword off to your blade. And then they do the attacks. And okay. so you could switch back and forth in match, kind of like Pokemon Trainer almost, between okay. the two. So it would be Rex for the uh, the slow uh, bringing up damage uh, attacks, and then you switch to Pyra to finish them off. Okay. So I like that. That sounds interesting. I mm-hmm. actually, like, I'm not good with Rosalina, but I like what they did with her. And it's the same thing with Pokemon Trainer and uh, Ice Climbers, where, like, they're different. Or even... Um, Olimar. Yeah. Like, I consider those characters to be experimental characters, but they work. And they're always unique, and when you know how to use them, you can have a lot of fun with them. So that yeah. does sound a lot of fun. Like, uh, having a character you can switch on and off like like that, I yeah. like that a lot. I just, I think it's it, it's still unique, and, they, and like I said, there's parallels with Persona that I just consider it. it it's almost... I, I won't be... I won't be upset if they don't get announced at all for this first season uh if or if this is the only dlc because honestly this roster is ridiculous no i i actually don't Um, know why they're doing dlc because i'm actually (laughs) happy with the roster they have right now yeah so that's my uh that was my i suppose my third choice 
Okay. Or my second choice, actually. So I still have one more to talk What's about. What's your first choice? All right, my first choice is another one that just seems way, way too likely, and this is why it's my first choice. Not that I have a real personal connection to the character yet, and the character isn't even out yet, so I have no clue. No clue. Um, but the first choice is Edelgard, and she's from, from... the new Fire Emblem. Okay. That's coming out in 2019. Okay. Uh, I think it's actually summer of 2019. For the Switch. So yeah. Okay. For um, it's a new it's a new game coming out. Okay. So we've already seen it in the past. I've already brought this up in the discussion. But Corin was the character brought in for promotional purposes, mo- for the most part. Um, and I can see Edelgard being brought in. Uh, the some positives is that she's a female fighter. Just so you know, both her choices are swordsmen. Yeah. Yeah. But she's actually she is a swordsman, but she has uh, she also uses magic and she also uses axes. Okay. So I would hope that they go with one of those two options. Well, that's basic, like, that was basically Corrin because Corrin had a sword just for aesthetic. Because yeah. Did you actually play the game without Corrin in it? Yeah. Okay, so you basically either use dragon the whole time or mm. you use... Or the sword. Or the and, sword. And but. Corrin's moveset does use that, utilize that in Smash. You use the sword or the uh, yeah. dragon attacks to turn into like lance arms and the blaster. Uh, firing the dragon shot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, uh, with Edelgard, that could be the same way. I would hope that they would lean more towards giving her the axe moveset. Because yeah. we still have yet to have, uh, outside of Simon, who, who has an axe as a projectile, we don't really have much of an axe user in the that's game. That's true, yeah. Um, so, oh, that's not true. We have Villager. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Dang it, John. <laughs> Why do you got to bring up the truce? That air, that air axe is uh, deadly. Yeah. The, um, but she's a female fighter. She could offer a unique move set when it comes to uh, weapon choices that she has. Yeah. Um, she could utilize a little bit more magic, some stuff that Robin doesn't do already. Yeah. Uh, and she's coming from the new Fire Emblem game, and we all know that Nintendo has really been making a huge push for their Fire Emblem. Now their Fire Emblem character. We <laughs> it had, would be another. We Fire got Emblem Chrome character. this game. Chrome. Chrome. It's not Chrome. It's not yeah, Google yeah. Chrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like the. You, every time I say his name, somebody corrects me, and it's I'm just not learning it. No. Okay. I'm so gonna, I'm gonna give up on it. But yeah, it's it would be another Fire Emblem character. But I want to be, be upset. fair. We have I think now eight or nine Mario characters. Nine Mario characters make, with, Mario with characters Daisy and makes sense, with so. Daisy and P- Petey Piranha, and we also have ten. Uh, Pokemon. So fire. It's not like Fire Emblem's like hugely outweighing the other roster. So I'm not I'm not upset if they add another Fire Emblem character mm-hmm. because I love Ike. I like Marth. Mm-hmm. Actually, I do like... I like them all. I like them all even though a lot of them feel like you're kind of playing the same mm-hmm. character. Uh, when they added Korra, and I was actually very excited because uh, I ended up playing... Uh, I'm blanking out on all three of their names. That's Conquest. Conquest, Birthright, and Revelation. Yes, I ended up playing all three of them... Uh, because I like the game that much, and I think Corrin, uh, no, Robin's still my favorite character in the Fire Emblem series, but mm-hmm. uh, Corrin was up there in the story, and I, I fell in love with it. I personally would not mind a Fire Emblem character, even though I know a lot of people were probably going to like yeah, hate me a for lot saying of that. Pe- no, a lot of, trust me, there's going to be a lot of people, just the general casual audience, that's going to be yeah. like, oh, oh, another swordsman. Another Fire Emblem character. And the best part is that my next choice, <laughs> or choice says, are actually Fire Emblem characters, and it's... Or, sorry, not Fire Emblem. They're Swordsmen. My number one choice is Erdrick from Dragon Quest, mm-hmm. Lacerelle from Dragon Quest, or Teresa from Dragon Quest, which all three of them are square. Um, Erdrick was the first main character. I think he fits... Uh, see, I want it to be him. I think it will be cool if it was him because he's the first Fire... En- or the first Dragon Quest character. Mm-hmm. But Lacerelle... Uh, from Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, which originally was supposed to be like a spinoff, and then it kind of become its own entity. And then we had like Heroes 2, and then we're getting Heroes... Uh, it's actually not called Heroes 3. It has a different name. Uh, Erdrick would be nice, but it's another swordsman. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a buff swordsman, which, apart from Ike, and I guess Ganon in a way, I mean, is he a swordsman? I mean, I guess you can consider him now to be a swordsman, since all of the Smash attack use swords. Yeah. But uh, Erdrick is, like, super buff. Like, we're talking about, like, bro... No, he's not bro buff. But he's really exaggerated buff. Mm. And he uses his sword, like, kind of, like, as if it was... He uses his sword, and it, he makes it look like he's carrying... Like, he makes it look like he's fighting, like, with an axe or a heavy weapon, even though it's, like, a normal sword. Uh, Lacerelle and Teresa, 
Uh, the reason I bring them together is because they're basically... They're, have you played Dragon... Uh, oh, I've never played a Dragon Quest game. Okay, so Dragon Quest Heroes, uh, their two main characters are actually very likable. They're cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them uses a... Uh, in canon, one of them uses a... Because you can change their weapons and you know their fighting style. Uh, Lacerel uses a sword, a one-handed sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Teresa uses uh, two swords. Uh, she uses two, uh, I want, they're like daggers, but they're a little bit longer than regular daggers. Uh, if they wanted to, they can just grab either or. Lacerel being the male, I feel it's more popular. Um, he has a, he already has the move set. Um, when you play in there, it's kind of like an action RPG. Could they interchange them? Like uh, how so, they have like the Corns and the Robins? I thought about that, but the problem is that they don't share each other's fighting style. Like oh. she could be like a, a ninja, nun, uh, thief, whatever. Mm -hmm. And her classes and his classes are different. Oh. Now for Smash reasons though, they can just put them together and make them like alternative costumes. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, uh, Lazarel has the sword, and he already has, because uh, he has, the element he has is fire. Let me think on that really bad, because I haven't played in three years, and I feel like somebody can call me out. One of them has ice, the other one has fire. Oh, no, it's I am YouTube. A, I am a hundred. Is, like, people are going to. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to hunt me down. But Lazarel <laughs> has fire, I remember. Lazarel has fire, mm -hmm. and he already has a moveset that is very unique, uh, so basically, you attack with your character, and you charge up a special meter. And once you hit that special meter, you you input a certain command, and you do like a certain move. Uh, he has a move where he engulfs like the area in front of him in fire for a couple seconds. That's something that I would love to see in Smash. Mm -hmm. um, right now, you have the Inklings that do something similar, where they kind of change the stage by putting paint on the floor, even though it doesn't do anything having it on the floor. It is there for. Uh, cosmetic. Yeah, have you played a... It actually does do something. Does it? Um, yeah, when you use the roller on the floor, it uh, it slows down uh, enemy movement. Okay. Yeah, it's just... It's it's very... I mean, I'm, I'm it's, sure... It's only on one move, yeah. and it doesn't, like, really affect too much, because not too many people just run straight through it. Yeah. Usually people are jumping all over the place. Yeah. Um, but you you played World of Light, right? Yeah. You've seen some of the matches that like af that affect the stage. Yeah. Like there's a, a couple of them that have like fire on the stage. Mm -hmm. I could see something like that. So he has a move that that's like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then he has another move where he jumps, which I think will be like a good recovery. And Lacero, like he jumps in the air, but what he does is like he jumps and then you know how links down in A where mm -hmm. he spikes down. Yeah. That that could be Lacero's up and B, like his saving move where. His recovery move where he throws the sword and then comes back down. Uh, he has... Yeah, kind of similar to Ike or... Um, kind of like Ike, but he actually comes down holding it like... Like uh, Link's I think, style. I, th I think the Mii fighters have a move like that. They don't throw the sword, yeah. but they rise up and then they like hold it down like Link's and punch. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they do. And I would love for him to have something like that. Um, I think he's the perfect character. He was very... One, he's not blonde. <laughs> so there you are. Uh, he has like grayish, purplish hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, uh, his character will be nice. The only thing that makes me think that it won't be like I'm very positive Dragon Quest is getting a game because uh, Dragon Quest 13 did freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't played it yet, sadly. Uh, is it even out here yet? Yeah, huh. it's been out. It came out the week of Spider-Man, so people are like, hmm, Spider-Man or Dragon Quest, you know, uh, yeah. 13. So uh, that's Last Royale. He actually uses two swords. I was wrong. She's the one that uses one. Oh, okay. um, so he does, but his attacks are still the same of what I said. Well, that would give us a dual wielder. We, yeah. We, we still have yet to have a dual wielder. And uh, he's very, he talks a lot. Mm. That's what it is. She uses a sword and a shield. Ah. And then, uh, so I prefer him just so we have a dual wielder. But he does have like, he has an amazing move set. Uh, the costumes are there because you can change the color of his costume, which you can naturally do on Smash Ready. It's kind of funny that it actually looks like a Smash Render, what you're showing me right now. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like from the new game. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I fell in love with the character. Uh, I remember playing the character, uh, and the first thing I thought about was he has to be in Smash. And I've been saying this since the game came out. Uh, he's one of the choices, uh, mainly because I love Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest is my Final Fantasy because Dragon Quest, I played Dragon Quest before I played Final Fantasy. Well, I think it actually existed before Final Fantasy too. Yeah. 
Um, I know that... Uh, I know the game is huge in Japan. Yeah. That's how I got into it. I had a pen pal, and he's like... He sent me a copy of a game, but I couldn't play it on my console because mm-hmm. it was from over there. Right. So uh, I remember, like, going to, like, New York, and we went to a flea market, and they had a bootleg version of a Dragon Quest game, and from there on, I was hooked. However, there is another character that has a high possibility because Dragon Ball, or I keep saying Dragon Ball, Dragon Quest Heroes, it is a spinoff, even though it ended up becoming its own entity, it's still not the main line. Uh-huh. Apart from Edric, uh, Tornico is an amazing character. So when you, uh, Tornico's an old man, he's a uh, traveling salesman, mm. but he's very goofy. He's always tripping. A lot of his attacks involve him like falling over, hitting you with his cart. Um, he has like a broom that he uses as a weapon. Mm-hmm. Um, let me find the character for you. But when you play with him, he's not as old as what he is now. Tornico, here it goes. He's not as old as. Uh, I like. It. I I love to play with him as this old guy that I'm showing you. Mm-hmm. But he he notice how he has like the bag. Yeah. And like so he has a moves. He, one of his moves that he literally grabs his bag and goes. Poof, 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 and like throws it back uh there's one where he there you see uh there's one of the games where he literally has like a bag full of different weapons uh that's not a broom but that's one of his main weapons he uses and then he does have a broom that he like literally beats people's ass with he's not always an old man uh he was younger in one of the games and Mm. they kind of made him age uh he's kind of been a staple in almost every game and even if he's not in it there's a lot of mention to him so he was kind of like the original main character, or one of them. Uh, people love him because of his comedy, and his moveset reminds me a lot of... That's weird. I'm going to cut this part out, but... The <laughs> RPG fanatic is the guy that me and DJ used to work with when we were in... Oh, uh, yeah. Tech, let me take a screenshot of this. DJ's not going to believe this. But uh, Tornico, um, he, his moveset reminds me a lot of... You know when you're playing Villager and you're running and you press yeah. A and he drops the plant, the potted right. plant, and I believe Isabel does the same thing. Isabel drops the pot. Yep. Yeah. So they can do the same thing, but his can be a cart that keeps going. You know how Wario has this uh, side and B with, yeah. a with a motorcycle? They can do the exact same thing with Tornico, but you charge it. So mm-hmm. when you drop it, it just keeps going. Oh, neat. And maybe explode or just run off the stage. Right. Uh, for his, uh, well, I was going to say, that could be his neutral B. Uh, for his side B, for his side special, they can do, because uh, he has that little weapon that I showed you, mm-hmm. and uh, he does like a little, kind of like, you know how uh, you have, I'm making the sound effects, but they can't, they, they see. can't yeah, see you. I'm like doing the motion, guys, <laughs> but you know how with um, Cloud, you have your side B? Yeah. He, they can do something similar to that. Um, I don't want him to have a counter. I actually mm-hmm. don't think that none of my choices need counter. Maybe Leon. Leon will be cool with a counter. But apart from Leon, uh, I don't think none of my choices should have counter, including him. Uh, I think that his moveset needs to be very comical to him. Uh, as long as they do the counter different, I don't mind it. I, I like Xenoverse counter is different. Yeah. And I like it. His, he has my favorite counter right now. Mm-hmm. So with Tornico, I think it will be cool if they just give him moveset that are totally him. Like, he's always tripping. He's always accidentally hurting, like, a monster. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and Heroes, he literally, like... He trips and stabs a monster by mistake. Uh, there's a game, I can't remember which one, but he's holding like a candle. And throughout the whole game, he's constantly catching things on fire. So like, he's very like clumsy. And I feel like that will be an amazing uh, character because it'll be the complete opposite of Incineroar who taunts mm-hmm. every time, you know. So Tornico will be, if they did Tornico, I'll be happy. If they do any of them, I'll be happy. But Tornico's the one that I feel, when you think of Dragon Quest, he represents the franchise more than any other character but they can do honestly they can just do the new one from 13 who yeah. looks like have you seen him he looks like android uh 17 well yeah and i mean that that's bound to happen because like, I, I think one of the uh kira toriyama it's yeah, the artist. i think in uh who was it uh dragon quest 8 there's a character that looks exactly like trunks yep and i was like how in the world did they get away with this i know he's the artist but yeah. like <laughs> so also how amazing would it be to have akira toriyama in some way, shape, or form, help out. I mean, and that, smash. It, 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 it would. I know. I know it wouldn't be the same for people that want Goku. Yeah. But it, it, it to me, it would be kind of like, well, that's kind of like the same thing. Yeah. Like all you need to do is throw a character that looks exactly like Goku, just from Dragon Quest or something. So and... Dragon, I want to say Dragon Quest four, three or four, mm-hmm. actually has a character that 
is a replica of Goku if you take those spikes from his hair. Mm -hmm. Like body wise, voice wise, face wise, and his hair's the same, but you know how Goku has the six spikes on the side? Yeah. They took those off. Okay. He has like a weird fro kind of thing, but yeah. um <laughs> yeah, that that's my number one choice. And I actually like it will make me so happy and it'll feel rewarding as a Dragon Quest player. To me it will feel very rewarding to have you know, any any character. Even the newest one, even though I haven't played the game yet. Mm -hmm. Uh the newest one, like just knowing that Dragon Quest has a representative in there will make me happy. Okay. I'm uh I think I'm okay with all these choices for our safe picks. Yeah. So we're actually gonna do a second video on Sharbler's channel where we're gonna do our crazy what we want picks and I'm, that one we're, I feel like we're gonna have a little more fun with completely out there yeah like these don't even have to make sense there's no like these will make it these will not make it I promise you at least mm -hmm. my list but we'll see you guys in Sherbler's channel I'm going to have the link to his channel not only right here on the video itself but I'm going to have it on the description so I'll see you guys there bye